This is an exclusive highlight from Leto Live on My Michigan TV. For more recent clips and full episodes, visit MyMyTV.com. Here's something you need to know about in Michigan, and that is the plants that come in in the spring that are dangerous to you. There are dangerous plants here in Michigan. Uh, and so the Detroit Free Press ran an article called Six Poisonous Plants in Michigan and What You Need to Know. And I encourage you to look at this because some of these plants are innocuous, meaning that they look like they're nothing, but they'll get you. And I have problems with poison ivy and poison oak. Almost every year I get poison ivy. Poison oak, I've had a couple times. It's similar, but it looks different. And one time I went into a doctor, I go, Doc, I think I got poison ivy. And he goes, no, that's poison oak. I said, oh, okay, that explains why I don't remember how I got it. <laughs> so with spring on the horizon, knowing what plants are poisonous is important. As Michigan has many poisonous plants. They can cause rashes. Some can even lead to death, believe it or not. And keep in mind, by the way, that if you avoid poison ivy, for instance, but you've got a dog, and your dog runs around in the poison ivy, and later on the dog runs around you, and you touch the dog, you might get the poison ivy off the dog. I know on one occasion, back when I had Milo and Wolfie, that Wolfie was cutting through some spots where there was poison ivy, and later on, he walked over and he tapped me with his paw, and the scratch he put in my arm became infected. I went to a doctor, I think, poison ivy? And the guy goes, yep, poison ivy. And I got it from my dog who had stepped in it and gotten it on his nails. So giant hogweed is the first thing you need to be aware of. Giant hogweed. According to the Michigan State Extension website, giant hogweed can cause severe reactions caused by the sap on the plant. Keep in mind, this one is a big plant. You can't miss this thing. And it can cause skin lesions and even long-term blindness. If you get this stuff on your skin or in your eyes, it's obviously very, very bad. Giant hogweed has clusters of umbrella-shaped white flowers. The plant can grow 7 to 14 feet tall and has stems that are green with purple splotches, according to the Michigan Invasive Species List. There's also poison hemlock. Hemlock, which sounds bad, but again, the question is, you've heard these words before, but if you haven't seen it, you know, so just like giant hogweed, poison hemlock has clusters of white flowers and the stems have purple splotches. According to an article by the healthcare blog Healthline, one difference between the two is that hemlock is found all over the U.S., while hogweed is less common and it's only found in specific regions. Poison hemlock is a weed, and it's actually a wild carrot. It's another Michigan weed, often mistaken for hemlock. It's typically found in the lower peninsula counties, but has been found in the upper peninsula as well. The seeds, flowers, leaves, and roots of the plant contain toxic alkaloids that can lead to respiratory failure and death, according to Healthline. The leaves on hemlock resemble parsley which sometimes leads to accidental poisoning because people say, oh, that's 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 parsley. I can eat that. Number three on the list is poison ivy, which is the bane of my existence. I don't like poison ivy. I encounter it all the time. And I and I and about once a year, I, I get it. You go to the doctor, they give you some pills, it goes away. But if you don't get it taken care of, it itches and it can spread and it can get ugly. And um, I've never had a really bad case of it, but I, I've known people who would go to the hospital because of the reaction they had to poison ivy. Poison ivy can be found in every single county in the state of Michigan, every single one. According to the MSU Extension website, it's common. Humans have the potential to have an allergic reaction to it because of an oily resin that is all over the plant. It's on the leaves, the stems, and even the roots. Now, you'll spot it. Because poison ivy has three leaves, and they always say, leaves of three, let it be. That's the old Boy Scout rhyme. And I've been in a state park before. They have a sign that says, this is poison ivy, in case you don't know. Because <laughs> there's a spot where this huge stretch of poison ivy grows every single year. And instead of trying to kill it, they just put up a sign saying, poison ivy, beware and, and study it, learn it. Uh, according to the Mayo Clinic, poison ivy can cause all kinds of symptoms, including a nasty rash, redness, itching, swelling, 
blisters, and even difficulty breathing. It's best to wash your skin immediately if you come in contact with it. And for me, poison ivy tends to be one of those things that only bothers me if I get it into a scratch or an open cut or something. I don't think it affects me if I simply touch it to my skin. At least it doesn't affect me that badly. But I know that if I have a scratch or a cut and I get it in there, it it, it gets bad. And a, a couple of years ago, I actually um, went in and um, went hiking up in the Upper Peninsula. And there's poison ivy where I was hiking. And I got poison ivy in my shoes. And I didn't think about it. And I took the shoes off. And, and later on, I went on a trip out of state. And I wore those shoes on the airplane. And towards the end of the trip, my feet started to itch really bad. And so I took my shoes off later and I'm like, oh my gosh, I had poison ivy in my shoes. Now my feet are all messed up because of the scraping inside the shoes. And so I went to a doctor and I said, I got poison ivy. And he goes, no, you don't. We don't have poison ivy in this state. And I said, well, I, I, it's from Michigan. Guy goes, well, you got to wait till you go back to Michigan then talk to your doctor because I don't, I don't think that's poison ivy. And so it's like, well, dude, I've had it before. I've got it again. I know what it is, poison ivy. And of course, I had to suffer for a few days, went back to Michigan. My doctor said, yep, poison ivy, and prescribed the uh, prescription. And I asked him, I said, why do you suppose the guy in the other state didn't believe me? And he goes, you know, once in a while, it's, you know, people are, are, are you know, go to a doctor and, and fake an illness to get drugs. I said, yeah, but is there really a need for the drugs that I'm trying to get here? And he goes, eh, just a knee-jerk response, I guess. Poison oak. Poison oak, this is a misnomer. Oak, of course, is a tree, like an oak tree, a white oak tree, red oak, pin oak, live oak, swamp oak, okay? But poison oak is not a tree. And I think the reason they call it this is that the shape of the leaves look a lot like oak leaves, but the plant is smaller and is very, very low to the ground. So the poison oak will be down near the ground. When I got poison oak, I was clearing some brush before I had a brush cutter. I was using a chainsaw, and I was in this area of brush swinging a chainsaw right above the ground, like literally, literally this high off the ground, swinging a chainsaw back and forth, back and forth. I had gloves on my hands, but as I moved my arms, my sleeves got pulled up. And stuff's flying off the chainsaw, hitting my arms. And I got all scratched up and got the poison oak in my open cuts there on my arm. Went into a doctor and said, I think it's poison ivy. And he goes, no, no, that's poison oak. He goes, were you working really close to the ground? And I said, yes, I was running a chainsaw this far off the ground. Because that's where poison oak is. So poison oak is lower to the ground than poison ivy. Poison ivy tends to be fairly low, but Poison ivy, I think, is more common, but poison oak is out there. It's a native to North America, typically found in eastern and central Michigan. Similar to poison ivy, contains the same oily resin that causes the problems. It's a shrub that is three or four feet tall at most, but it's often lower than that. Contains small white flowers in the spring. The chemical found in this plant can affect your skin, eye, and respiratory system according to the New England Carnivorous Plant Society. <laughs> the New England Carnivorous Plant. I don't know if this thing's going to eat you or not, but uh, apparently carnivorous plants are out there. They have their own society. Number five is poison sumac. Poison sumac is similar to poison ivy and poison oak in terms of having the poisonous oily resin called urushiol. I could be mispronouncing it, and I probably am. The same symptoms apply as well and can be noticed within 8 to 48 hours after contact, according to an article by Healthline. Uh, the plant has reddish stems and leaves that contain 7 to 13 leaflets arranged in pairs with a single leaflet at the end, plus additional looks as well. Plant can be found in swamps, wetlands, or hardwood forests. But keep in mind that poison sumac is a relative, apparently, of a much more mild Thing like staghorn sumac. So if you drive around in late summer in Michigan, especially up north, you'll see these bushes. They can grow very, very tall, and they've got these red flower-like things on them. It's called staghorn sumac, and it's they look almost like the horns or antlers of, a, of an animal. 
and they're covered with this fuzzy red stuff. And that's staghorn sumac, which is absolutely fine. You could smoke that stuff. You could eat it. It won't hurt you. But poison sumac will get you. And so I've had people say before, oh, that sumac, that's dangerous. Well, no, poison sumac is dangerous. The other sumacs are not. I've got staghorn sumac growing on my property. I think it's cool. It's a neat, it's a neat shrub, and it's something that just grows naturally. And I think it looks neat. And it grows very large, grows very hardy, it's big, and survives. And I like that. The sixth one they warn you about is wild parsnip, a biennial, a biennial flowering herb on a single stem that can grow to five feet with leaflets that are toothed and shaped like a mitten, according to the Michigan Invasive Species List. These plants are invasive uh, because they are native to Eurasia and are often found in open fields and open areas. Wild parsnip spreads through their seeds when carried by wind, water, or equipment. The stem, leaves, and flowers contain chemicals that increase skin sensitivity to sunlight and can cause severe blisters or rashes, according to the Michigan Invasive Species List. So if you're going to go out and tramp around out in the woods, you got to keep your eyes peeled. And of course, it's smart to cover yourself, especially below the waist. Long pants, boots, and make sure there's no bare skin down there. And you'll discover, for instance, if you've got a little strip of skin right at the top of your boot that's not covered, that's where you're going to get hit. And so, you know, I, I learned to deal with this stuff a long time ago. And the only time it's gotten me in the last few years is when I let my guard down and, and literally didn't, you know, exercise caution out there. So I got poison ivy last year. The year before I got poison ivy, poison oak. And the poison ivy last year, I'm trying to remember, but it was a situation where I think I was clearing brush and I had gloves on and long sleeves on. And again, I got it on my arms. And so it's that and deer ticks. You got to watch for deer ticks outside also. <laughs> it turns out that a lot of what's out in the wild in Michigan is in fact trying to kill you. You should just know that, learn that and learn to deal with it. Thanks for watching My Michigan TV. If you liked this video, head over to our website, mymytv.com and subscribe for free today. That's mymitv.com. You can also download our free app for smartphones and smart TVs. My Michigan TV, all Michigan streaming everywhere.